Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Takeaway Thursday. Our next speaker, Keanu, will be talking about one of my favorite um, JavaScript libraries. So one of my favorite things about technology and the browser is data visualization, because you can do such really, really awesome things, discover new dimensions of data, etc. And now Keanu is about to bless us with an introduction and overview to p5.js. Keanu, the floor is yours. All right. Hello, everybody. So I'm just going to, thanks for the introduction, Lucky. I'm just going to jump right into it. So best way to start with P5 is just head on straight to their website. And from there, you'll download the P5 library. And getting started with P5 is literally as easy as adding a P5 in your HTML file. So once you've done that, you're ready to start coding with P5. It's that quick. Um, best thing you can do if you don't want to go through that hassle is head over to the P5 website as well, and you can just use their online editor. So uh, with P5, uh, there's two main things that you're going to be looking at, which is your setup and your draw function, setup and draw functions, which are uh, based on the P5 library and if you've ever used the HTML5 canvas, it's basically just, um, wait, why not sharing my screen? Oh no, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, okay, should be good now. So this is the P5 editor and it uses two functions, the setup and draw function. Uh, if you ever use the HTML5 canvas, P5 is literally that, but on steroids. So uh, set up, you'll be doing all your uh, initial stuff. So like creating your canvas, this will create a canvas 400 pixels by 400 pixels wide. And then where most of the magic happens is in this draw function. So this updates at a, I think the base frame rate is 30 frames per second, but you can set all of that to your heart's desire. So this basic function is gonna be drawing a white canvas. All right. So if we want to play around with that a little bit, we can make an ellipse, which is also a basic primitive on P5, which will draw a circle of these dimensions. And then change your fill to let's make it green. So the nice thing about P5 is also um, it doesn't really restrict you on how you want to set up your colors. So you can use uh, zero to two, five, five, literally white to black, or you can use RGB, or you can use hexadecimal, uh, whatever you want to, whatever you're comfortable with. So this basic program, the way it works is it executes each line in the draw function once, and then it restarts it, draws it again, draws it again. So what's actually happening is the background is being filled in every frame. Then it changes the full color to a green, draws a circle with those dimensions, and adds it to the screen. And then when the, where the element of um, change happens is you can obviously add in any variable. So it's JavaScript. And we can increment that variable. And we can increment the position of our circle. So now when it runs, it's gonna um, move the circle along the canvas, just like that. And one important thing to note is, much like the HTML5 canvas, P5 does not save any reference to anything drawn on the screen. So this is a bit of a double-edged sword because for one, um, it saves a lot of memory because everything is just lost as soon as it's drawn. But two, you have to kind of save everything you draw in arrays. So create an object for the circle, save it in an array, save its position, save its color, and then you can have context of the circle you're actually drawing. Cool. Um, something else you can do uh, if you guys are into game design, and I'm sure you noticed that this is basically like a game loop, this draw function, you can go ahead and make a game. So this is an example on the P5 website of Snake. So P5 does allow for input. 
Um, so all you need is input, a game loop, and then you can make pretty much any game you want, which isn't greatly optimized, but it does work if you want in-browser games using JavaScript. All right. So using this, I'm just gonna show an example that I made uh, last year. So using VS Code, uh, if you wanna use VS Code and use JavaScript files, because you're probably gonna end up, if you wanna make data visualizations, probably gonna save a JSON file or an XML, um, a CSV file and use that data to visualize. If you wanna do that from VS Code, you need to download an extension called Live Server. Yeah, Live Server, and that just lets you um, not run into any hassles with loading the JSON or the XML files to use for your data visualization. So what I did in this program is I got a bunch of NASA um, information on all the planets, transcribed that into a JSON so I could use it. And then I made a solar system data visualization to scale mostly. So this is like one of the things you can make with um, uh, P5, which I think is probably its best implementation, data visualization whether artistic data visualization or literal um, visualization. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. So I think that's me for today.